Well, tonight I got to go to the grid, which is a little uh, arcade bar over in uh, Mesa. Um, I, you know, uh, it was supposed to be a show. I mean, it was a free show, but it was a uh, supposed to be a show, but it was more like a uh, a deluxe open mic. It was terrible for the most part. Uh, Pena was good, and then the last guy. Um, Chad Miller? Yeah. Yeah. ChadComedy.com. You know, um, when you see his act, it's terrible. However, relative to the night that we had and the comics that were up there, he, it was a nice change. Anyways, um, somebody had asked about uh, Speaker Builder Magazine. So it was almost like somebody didn't believe me that it existed. And... Uh, so this motherfucker was $7 in 1996, right? That's some shit right there. This is a trade magazine. So and they got ads in here, but they just have ads from different um, voodoo vendors, Infinicap and uh, Wonder, Wonder Cap, Infinicap, like some sort of, you know, bypass capacitors and all that kind of bullshit. High buy research, which actually makes some pretty great drivers. Um, you got to watch your budget on some of them. So, but they they make them in cool colors and stuff like that. Uh, this is LMS loudspeaker measurement solution. <laughs> it works with your Frogger machine. So whatever. This was cute though. Uh, Acoustical Supply International. They make this as a little Class D board. Uh, 200 watts at 8 ohms. Um, but I haven't heard from them. So. PWM. Maybe that's just the output board. Not the power supply. And then you can either power supply it with, you know, 110 or 12 volts. Depending on what your source is. The Loudspeaker Journal. So um, the company that uh, makes or used to print this um, is all, is, what's funny is it's called Audio Express, but it's Audio X Press. And what's weird is there's a, a, a really shitty um, retailer here called Audio Express. Home, 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 home of the $1 installation. And we call it the home of the $1 dash fire because they really do shitty work. But, you know, if you want to buy your daughter some, Stuff I used to hear a lot from forgings, but I think they got um, I think they went crash uh, during the recession. They were pretty big. They were selling, making a lot of shit. So, but uh, new cap distributor, multi cap. This just gets into the details of, of mostly speaker building. But anyways, Audio Express. So Audio Express used to make um, three magazines. One was Speaker Builder. The other one was, uh, I think it was like a tube aficionado, but it was called something else. I forget what it was. And then uh, the third one was like for guys that make their own amplifiers. That used to be a thing back in the 70s and, and 80s was making your own amplifier. In fact, that's how um, Bob Carver got his start. So they used to do these workshops where you made your own home amplifier and then you brought it in and you got to compare it to um, a Macintosh. Right. It was sponsored by Macintosh. And it, it was basically to show you that you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Macintosh knows what the fuck they're doing. And, you know, the secret to Macintosh is those big VU meters. So, but um, this is speaker works out of Tulsa. I don't know. Did they even have a dot com. This is 1996. Probably not. So, uh, yeah. So Bob Carver, um, his famous coffee can. Um, I think that's Audax, Audax, Polydax. That's a, a French um, OEM. For they probably see them in here. See, th these are all the Morel is one of them. Peerless, Vifa, Vifa, Peerless, uh, Dynaudio, ScanSpeak are all under one brand now called Timphony. It's usually by the same engineer that goes, or same few engineers that go from 
brand to brand. They sell the, the brand once they've established some pretty good products. And then they go and start another company and it's even better Uber products. And so Zolitron, you know, what's funny is I actually looked up these guys the other day. Their website is, uh, um, it's a zombie website. I haven't seen one of those in a while. Like it's like it's hosted on some dude's fucking, you know, Duron processor. And, uh, but it's, it's a, it's a zombie. There's like, you know, not everything works and, uh, it's, uh, but it's uh, right there out of Mineola, New York. And we used to see this in uh, this magazine and some others. And it's just a warehouse. It's so funny. You can go look it up now on uh, Google Maps. Everything was such a mystery to us. We just see the ad and that's the only thing that we knew from the ad. See, like these guys, like Solon or Solon. I don't even know what it's. it's uh, these guys are the Canadian distributors for these brands. So... They're like the Mattisound of Canada. Um, but they also had their own brand of uh, caps. They probably still have that. Um, but you can see these are the, some of the drivers that they brought in. A little bit of a diagram. Great graphics. I mean, as far as, you know, black and white goes. And then look at that. Really detailed. They would show you exactly what the crossover breakdown is. Uh, third order, highly damped, overlapped, line level, passive. Crossover. What's up, sis? You want some food? Mama, will you come give her some food? Thank you. Increase your electronic skills knows house. It's old colony sound lab. That uh I don't know if I forget. I think they used to be called that was the um people that made this or affiliated with it. It's a, it used it used to be a very small group of people. So maybe less than 50, 50 people running the whole industry. Speaker City, USA. Excellence from Denmark. Another one was Davis Audio. They made some really cool drivers, but you know, now you can find all that shit in China. So. And then, so Speaker Build the Magazine would, would take you step by step on a project, you know, on uh, building the cabinets. Uh, what crossovers they used, and uh, this one here is a cut sheet using stuffing, which looks like an old jizz rag, old towel, or something like that. And uh, it was kind of cool just because you know, if you were a, uh, a middle aged guy with not much to do, you could do this kind of shit. So, now this is Speaker Works, this is uh, Ted. Ted Turner um, and his dad, Carl, or father-in-law, sorry, father-in-law, Carl. These guys were right here in Phoenix. And then um, I got to know Ted after the auction. Um, there you go, LPG. And um, I ended up, I ended up buying, I ended up buying speaker works. So I bought out like a whole bunch of his materials. He was like, I was he goes, uh, give me 500 for everything. I was like, okay. And then I got like a shit ton of uh, inductors and a bunch of other, sh you know, just passive crossover shit. And, um, or no, 450. Uh, because then he says, well, how much? He says, uh, I asked him, I said, you know, are you selling the dot com? Because he owned this, he owned speakerworks.com. And uh, he goes, well, how much you give me for it? And I go, how's 500? And, and he was like shocked. He was like, oh my God, I can't believe you think it's worth that much. And I go, dude, your speaker works, you know, like to me, it was like a big deal. And so, um, I think I told you this story now. I think I'm remembering. I, I think I told you this story, but, um, yeah, so I got the dot com transferred over and then, um, I posted it on eBay for $35,000 and, uh, Ted saw it and, uh, Ted never returned my phone call after that. <laughs> I mean, I would have split it with him. Shit. But, um, so, but you know, Ted was making more money, uh, doing remodels in Paradise Valley. So he got out of the speaker business. He wasn't doing any more recones for me. He showed me all of his secrets and I took them all and ran with them. Look at that. You could have win stuff. The shipping on that would kill you. See, Mattis sounds, these are their house brand. 
Uh, this is before Silver Flute, I think. Uh, Audex, so they were basically having them built by Audex. And, you know, these are some pretty good drivers. So, but because they didn't look fancy, you know, like an Aerogel cone. Who, who is that? I think that was uh, Audex. They had some Aerogel cone. I don't know what the fuck Aerogel is. This is stupid. It looked cool, you know, but it was like really expensive. Like, look at the price of these. Like, see, 43 bucks for a 10 inch woofer? That would be about $100 today, which is still pretty good. I don't know about the 3.5 millimeter X Max. That's not very much. So, but these are some basic drivers. I think they were just getting them made in uh, probably by Gefco. Maybe they were importing them. I don't know. Glass audio. That's what it was called. And that was their tube. If you're into tube amps. So, but you know, in the 90s, this is what we had, man. This was, uh, it was real cheap. How much was it? See, you could buy back issues. And I bought um, a shit ton. Like I, um, when I was making good money in uh, before the recession, I like I bought. I was like, I want to support these guys. You know, like I spent some money. Ultimate Auto Sound. You can make all the bandpass boxes you want. Box model for Windows, sixty five dollars for a program. What? Loudspeaker design power sheet. It's famous, see, because it says right there. Man, this was, you know, this was early, early, early internet. They weren't even doing, the only thing on the internet at the time was a bunch of fucking anime porn. It's art. It's the dirty pair. Like, shut up, Barry. That's porn. It's cartoon porn. Jiver Design Limited. Who was that? Who's that? Who's that? Quality American made loudspeakers. See? That's what everybody had back then. AOL. That's yeah, that's just some dude working at home. Speaker design toolbox for Windows 95. Yeah, old colony sound loud. Capacitors, why they matter. Now, some of this stuff, they would just regurgitate. Uh, some of the stuff they would test, and they would show you what's what. And what I have noticed is that typically the higher voltage capacitors, they're, they're more um, consistent, I should say that. D-flex panels, see? It breaks up the standing waves. But there's still a lot of bullshit in here. So this was back when MCM was the shit right there. Look at that. 1125 for an 8-inch woofer. That is the tits. Tits McGee. I used to just soak up that fucking MCM catalog and compare sensitivities. O-scope on a floppy. There you go. For only 189 What? Measuring driver flux density by Don Jenkins. Driver flux density. Displacement, voice coil current, Tesla length. Boy, that is getting into some deep shit. Tesla meter squared shit. Animal magnetism. See, and then you could order old ones. And they tell you what things were covered and things like that. So I wish I could pull up that article. I, I, I still, I'm still getting hate mail. I consider all those messages you guys leave for me on YouTube as, as emails. Because, I mean, it's just as legit as an email. Biamping? See, Prodigy was the other one. They, they were like inventors of the internet before the internet. Custom isolation supports. And then meniscus, they were my favorite. So they had a bunch of uh, closeouts all the time. So Wyoming, Michigan. Uh, they're kind of like if you go to apexjunior.com, 
which uh, he sometimes has good stuff too. It was kind of like that. And you get this, this really shitty printed up, like it wasn't even like a Xerox. It was like a, a, the, the roller, like you see in uh, Fast Times at Ridgemont High. It was like, you know, you set it up, the typeset, and, and it just prints them out. And uh, you'd get one of those in the mail. And I was in the Air Force at the time. And that was the shit. That was before the internets. Wayland's Wood World on how to assemble a closure. These are actually pretty good. This is good woodworking stuff. So McFeely's square drive screws before square drive was a thing. Our samples are better than free. And then CFAC, copper foil air core inductors. Talk about the awesomeness of, you know, well, this is before DSP. It's like, if you once you use DSP, you're like, why would I ever use a passive crossover? It just, it just drinks, it saps electricity. You don't need them. They just get hot. Hot to try. To. Software report, room design power sheet. Yeah, this gets really deep, man. I mean, uh, I can see why now they boiled it down to, vo well, the trade magazine now is called Voice Quill. And I have a subscription. You can get a subscription to it. You just say that you're a student. Make up some bullshit school name or whatever. It doesn't matter. They, you got to understand that they make more money from their ads if they have more subscribers. Now, if you're a paying subscriber, yes, they make some money from that. But they actually make more money from the ads, like Faro Sound. Faro Fluid is garbage. All it is is oil with rust in it. That's all it is. And it's good for some heat seeking, uh, heat sinking applications, but not for voice coil gaps. Um, do not put it in your voice coil gap. That's dumb. Mace box five. I used blah box, which was free. That is a, it looks like a focal driver. Yeah, it is a focal driver. There you go. There's your FS at 27 Hertz. And that was when they made real subwoofers. Not these weird fucking weird sizes, weird everything, so that you can't copy it, you can't speakers, etc. They were the other one. Oh, they were in what the oh that's right, that's right. These were the um what's his name? Marcel. Uh they actually built some really high end, nice home uh like home hi fi stuff. Like you go in and loosen to their tube amp and stuff like that. And they sold what did they sold? Urs, uh Orca connectors uh, Audax, Focal, uh, Eon or Axon or whatever, and then Akutan. Uh, Akutan you made, uh, was probably famous for their inverted dome tweeters. That's about it. And they were made out of like, uh, cast aluminum, which is weird because it's like a really tiny casting. So, there's, you know, mostly just ads were kind of cool. And then Mailbox was kind of cool because you, Dude, your chances of getting in there were actually pretty fucking good. Especially if you had some, uh, you know, some good questions. So, you're like, hey, babe, I made it into Speaker or Builder Magazine. Good, honey. Are you coming out of the basement? No, babe. Doing important work down here. Organizing my porn collection. But it ends up the same every time. Speaker place new foam. Do you need foam? Refoam edges, mid ranges, tweeters, crossovers at msn.com. Mahogany sound. Uh, what do I know of those? Oh, mobile. That's the, yeah, acoustic stuff. What's his name? Oh, I did that video on this. Yeah. He just lived with his mama. Uh, and then they got a little, uh, bullshitty with this shit and these are, this is just like copper foil and stupid shit like that replace your cables and inductors with alpha core copper and silver we take visa and american express but really you know the look of those is what really sells them uh otherwise lamp cords sounds just the same the classifieds were always interesting too because you sometimes you know it was a great way for you to leverage your way into being a real business uh, just by selling stuff like these. And, you know, I remember back in the 90s, there was a guy telling you, he what what he did was he gathered information from all over the country, from newspapers all over the country. And then I think it was like 50 bucks or something like that, and I bought it. And uh, it would give you lists for every newspaper, and then you could like submit, you know, payment for a little ad, for a little tiny classified ad. 
And, uh, you know, this was before the internet. So you could reach other markets in uh, different parts of the country. There used to be a, a magazine called, uh, or a weekly newspaper called Penny Saver. And then there was full of ads. It was like uh, Craigslist before Craigslist. So you could buy old voice coil magazines. This is all from the same guy. What is this? Now these are different guys. And don't get mad that I'm giving out people's phone numbers. He, he put it in a fucking classified, so fuck off. So, and then look at that. Look at that. Oh, telling you one inch linear travel. Look at that big top plate. See, look at that. They're like, this is better. Well, it's not, but you know, Tilo made like it was. Or I think he hoped it was. So, but nobody was doing it. Because steel is expensive. Ferrite is cheap. So, and then Raven. Ooh, these were the, the, I don't want to say Tits McGee. I want to say the Cat's Meow. Uh, and then Orca, Orca Design and Manufacturing Group. They did the um, squishy stuff inside the um, cabinets. They did some other, it's probably just like one, maybe two dudes. That do all that and then you know you make the ad and you all this kind of stuff and then of course parts express pulling in the anchoring the the magazine there's the arrow gel so and then of course morale on the back telling you about hexacoil wire technology and just stupid shit like that so but that is the speaker builder magazine it's not bad 1996 one of the ones I liked, uh, the the kind of, I didn't really see it in this one. I guess it would be here where the software report is. Typically, um, what they do is um, in Voice Call Magazine, they they have uh, a review section where they just, they do testing and real reviews on it. And of course, every, every one that they print has a glowing review. Not that that's bad, but just what they do is they review it and then they t they, they tell you yes, it's good, or yes, it's a piece of shit, so, so that then you can decide whether or not you want to let the world know that you had you you imported a piece of shit and now you got to get rid of them. So, But uh, right about three quarters of the way through, that's where I liked it because the, you know they go through projects and things like that and, and really give you some deep information. This one's a little too deep for uh, even me, and, and I know that a lot of this shit doesn't even matter. Um, can you hear the difference? No, so... But um, the great thing about these magazines is that that's where I learned things like, um, actually, no, I think that was a loudspeaker cookbook was like a crosstalk in uh, inductors, you know, making sure that uh, each inductor was on a different plane uh, so that um, because you got to remember that the fields are expanding and collapsing with the AC signal and uh, you don't want them to uh, interfere with one another. And so that I, somebody got mad that it was bad mouthing uh, Morel uh, passive crossovers, and it, you know they weren't even using. You know you're paying eight, I think it was six to nine hundred dollars for a component set, and they didn't even have the courtesy to use just air core inductors. They were using steel laminate cores, which is, you know, when you put a when you put a, a core in the middle of an inductor, it makes it a little more sensitive, but what it does is it, the compromise is that it lowers its saturation point. So it can only take so much power. Um, but it also depends on how many windings and also how many, uh, what is it, uh, the gauge of wire. So um, you get into other weird things that happen with heat. Uh, I think it's called hysteris. I can't remember. Uh, but it was all stuff that we studied in uh, uh, Air Force school for electronics and things like that. But um yeah, Morel, dude, they, it was they they're just it's made in China and and it's and it's like the the, the least thing that they could do is 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 use air core inductors and mylar caps. Not that it makes it any different sonically, but it's like it's just, you know, if you're going to It's like it's like being a Mormon and then bringing, you know, Coke and Dr Pepper to a picnic. It's like you know better than that. You know you shouldn't do that. Jesus is frowning. Even though when you're at home, you can do the do, you know, so. But uh, Jesus loves you. I love you. That is your, oh, what? What is that, Patrick? You got a good treat for the, the good boys and girls at home? 
Oh, what's that? The Rockford Fosgate Old School Confidential. Ooh, don't tell anybody. Uh, effective 2003. Price guide for dealers. Ooh, juicy, juicy. Juicy, juicy. Confidential terms and policies. Fuck you, Rockford Fosgate. Because you're not the same company. Never were, really. These I like these head units. They, um, I think they got in trouble with iPod, with Apple, because the remote was really the, the shit on those. It was the uh, 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 execute and then uh, uh, jog. It's fucking great. I love those. Um, these were their first uh, attempt over uh, overseas importing. And I think they did a really good job on these. I really liked them a lot. So if you can see here, um, this is what I was telling you about in that 50 ohm source impedance. And that shows you, um, uh, I guess, having a low source impedance was the, here's the 100 ohm one, whatever. So, but uh, there you go. It's a two volt output at 100 ohms. But typically the input impedance on most amplifiers and signal processors is 10K, sometimes 20K. So having a two volt input doesn't really mean shit when, you know, the uh, terminal impedance is like in the kilo ohms. It's so stupid. So you don't need a fucking 4 volt, 8 volt, 16 volt pre out. But they'll give it to you. Toby Pro Logic. I have one of these actually. Um, I bought it. I wanted to test it out and use it for some home theater. And get, I don't do home theater anymore. I, I don't have time. So. The accessories, the IR remote control, it was only $20. Oh, yeah, let me give you pricing. So the RFX 9020 was only, dealer cost $126. And then the MSRP, right? That's the suggested retail price is $239. So as you can see, a lot of these, typically in car audio, you get, you double your money. So I think it's technically, they call it 100 points or whatever. So you should make 100 points or 50 points or whatever. However, depending on if you're going up or down. So these are the type R RF amplifiers. The XC1. Look at that. 384. That's pretty expensive for dealer cost. Now, what a lot of times what they would do as well is uh, they would give you um, sometimes 180 days, same as cash. Meaning 0% um, financing as long as you paid it off in six months. Um, but... Uh, uh, a lot of the, the way that they made the sales structures for a lot of these companies, including Orion and all those guys, is that like they, they would pay out like if they really move some equipment, they would pay out the commission. But then what would happen was then the dealer would then send back the stuff. Would they take the commission back? No. So um, it wasn't always the greatest way, but it definitely put some uh, some motivation under the under their their pantalones to get them to sell shit. So let's go down to the, the mono ones because those are probably the ones that still exist that people really like. And of course, this is just the um, 500 watt, 750, and then 1000, which I think these were just conservative. Yeah, so yeah, it would tell you, right? So this was the 500, uh, and then this was the 1000, and then this was the 1500. So it was the same amplifier, uh, but it was fan cooled. Uh, I have one out there. It's it's a piece of shit. And then one of the things that they, um, but if you want to buy it, I'll sell it to you. Um, but uh, they, like the plastic that they used was not uh, temp rated properly. And so they were having these amplifiers catch on fire. And then they were like, I think they only carried them for like two years. So, and then they were like, okay. But it was a cool um, attempt at stuff. So those are the dealer costs. And then you look at the MSRPs. So, and they can ask 1500 bucks, 1600 bucks, but I doubt they would get it, but that's how it goes. Here you go. This is what everybody liked. Those series. Let's look up a, a there you go. Let's go again, go to the class D's. So the 1500 uh, dealer price on that was 568. That is very steep. I think they can still give discounts on that shit. That is still very steep. We'll compare that to this one which dealer cost was another $200, $300. So, but that's what everybody has now left over. Yeah, the rest of this stuff just ends up garbage. And then you have the punch series. That was the, oh, that was the power series. And then I think the power series was only, um, was it one? I think, let's see. 
they were silver versus the black. I think that was the only difference. And then maybe had the little bit cooler controls or something like that. 801S, that one's pretty popular. 318, dealer cost, MSRP, 659. So, uh, but yeah, and then they would tell you the master pack quantity because sometimes it's a, you know, it's easier for them if you, if you order the master pack. Sometimes they would give you a discount too. So the multi-channel ones, uh, 801X, 501X. And then the distributor that I dealt with, which is who I got this confidential price sheet from, typically, um, if you just if you made friends with them, they would give you discounts on top of that. But again, they were still making a ton of cash. Um, the real place to get these, look at that, TMRF. The real place to get those stuff was from uh, the employees. The, they'd have the employee sale, and they would sell the employees uh, uh, woofers dollar an inch. So a 12-inch woofer, no matter what uh, series it was, was $12. Fucking great. And then technically they were supposed to hang on to it for a year and then only sell it to like friends and family. And they weren't supposed to flip it because they, you know, they had flood the market. So, but there is the team RF and then dealer cost on those was $900. That is crazy. But you were supposed to sell it for two grand. So, uh, and then of course, uh, USMAP, which is minimum advertised price. You couldn't advertise it for less than $1,800. And typically that would be met really quick. And Tilo only rated them at 2000 RMS, but it was a 400 ounce magnet structure, uh, which was like Ermagerd back then. So, and this was the basically a tight gap version of the TC 5200. So, and then Cactus Sounds, uh, I don't know if Cactus Sounds was buying from Tilo, but I think they started importing on their own. Uh, Cactus Sounds was also uh, out of Phoenix. And I got some of their coils from Precision Econowine on a closeout. And I have I still have some of those. They're like dual 0.3 and dual 0.76 or something like that. So uh, if you have these, I have coils for them. So whatever. The Power HX2. So the 15 and the 12, those are probably the most popular. 300, I don't, it was not no 300 ounce magnet structure. Um, maybe 300 ounce total. See, that's that's some bullshit right there. So... Uh, 250 and 300 bucks. Uh, let's see. NA Master Pack, it was just, you, they were sold, sold individually. So. Punch subwoofers. I, I never liked their nomenclature. It was always so, like, this part number. It was like, what? Like, just say Punch HX2 or whatever, and then whatever. So, but the 18 with Santa Prince around. Oh, and the 18 had a 4-inch. Coil, uh, even if though it was the punch, not the power series. Oh, let me look at that one up. One of the power series. They didn't have the power in an 18, only the punch. But I think they used the power motor. I think that's what it was. So you could get it in dual two or dual four, and dealer cost was four hundred dollars. Sometimes they would do free shipping too, like if you bought a pallet worth. They go. You buy two grand worth of shit, we'll ship it on a pallet for free. Uh, there you go, using BART foam. What the fuck does that mean? And they, they, do, they would just name shit to, so that it seemed like it was special. And then, of course, they, they printed this catalog, and then, they, of course, they would leave that out. They would leave that information out, and they would say, you know, MSRP and stuff like that. So they, that way, the copy, the... Uh, the copy could still be recycled and, and used as marketing materials. And then Punch HE, this is one of my favorite woofers. Because uh, it, it, they only used like a two or two and a half inch uh, copper coil, real soft suspension. But they played flat to like 30 hertz, the um, 10 and the 12. Um, the boxes had to be a little big, but they were amazing for home theater. So uh, there we go. Punch HE 15, 8 ohm or 4 ohm, and then 100 bucks. And then it was the Punch Z that was the big seller. So not that, it, not that it was any good, but the Punch Z they were like giving away. So yeah, so $63 for 15. And uh, of course they would give huge discounts on those. And I think this is, yeah, this is 2003. So they were, this has got to be an import. There's no way they could do that American made. So 
So, but you know, not that that's bad. But um, you know, as a as a company uh, grows, sometimes they'll import shit like this just to see how the manufacturer does, and then also to see how the factory reacts when it's a hit product when they they make a um, a repeat order, and then you see if they jack up the price or if they start skimping on quantity or not quantity but quality. Um, and you got to watch your vendors. And typically what they do now is you have uh, a vendor and then you have a backup vendor and then you even have one, you know, like in reserve, like, you know, hey, you know, and then sometimes you got to throw them a bone. You're like, hey, can you do a run of 500? And they're like, yeah. And so but the other two are the ones that are producing. And so you you got to do your best to keep them secret. It's so crazy because they share they share open secrets. They have lunch with one another and then they tell each other about business and then. They, 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 it's us against them. It's kind of this weird, creepy, uh, <sighs> war, but it's like, it's like, you're just fighting over retail dollars over this, the harvest of the stupid people that buy this shit. So, you know, because they're, they're posting a component set for, what is that? Focus. There you go. For 479. And that is for a two inch four, <laughs> two way four inch component set. So the FNQ uh, six and a half, which was one of my favorites as far as good looking goes, and they wanted you to sell that for four nineteen, and then there was the dealer cost. Uh, the FNQ tweeter, one hundred five, uh, and then the master pack was six pair. So, so you know, I hope this explains why I'm. I don't want to say I'm jaded. Um, I just. I know the real numbers. And then what's really crazy is when you see manufacturing numbers. And even then, it's it's you in order to see the real manufacturing numbers, you got to go over there. You got to make the you know the trip and spend two weeks there and all that kind of shit. And uh, you know, you get to say you're a giant, even though you're six one. Um I don't even think these are just the poly ones. $86 deal to the price. So, you know, and again, they were advertising these for $149. And then they come in and they go, like, especially if you're at the end of the month, they go, well, we'll give them to you for $129 or something like that. Or even $100. But, you know, they were buying them for $86 or less, most most likely less. Like I said, um, if you made friends with them or you just moved product, like, to them that you were useful. And if you're moving product, then all of a sudden you're a friend. And that's how you make friends, at least in business. As everybody, everybody takes a, a a bath in the orgy blood of the consumer. So and that's their super capacitor, which if you open up, is just a bunch of little super capacitors all put together. Now these are one of my favorite RCA uh, series. I love this one. I would love to. I, well, I would love to do a shorter one. Um, and I don't like this. Uh, this this rips off RCA connectors all the fucking time. Um, but I'd love to do uh, sort of a copy of it, make it short because you always, there's, there, it's never good enough to do the uh, long ones. So I got a bunch of the matrix ones, uh, out of, ret that were returns, uh, matrix series. They had the riot series, which was, um, it was a braided, uh, uh triple. It used it a, um, just a, just a plastic empty wire. It was just a casing, but that way you could braid it. Because you need three wires to braid it. Otherwise, it was just twisted pair, which is not bad. I actually want to. I still want to import this wire um, as speaker wire. Do some really cool flexible. Um, it only needs to be like eighteen gauge um, copper, and it's it's fantastic. It's fucking super cheap, and uh, you can make your own RCAs with it. You can use it for speaker wire. Eighteen gauge is big. Eighteen gauge speaker wires is plenty big for speaker wire, especially if you're only going twenty feet, and that's what your. Uh, factory radio provides and it's fine oh my god you don't need to run a bigger wire than that so oh yeah the new matrix so i have the three meter one which is that one cpm 100 and dealer cost on it was 17 dollars, and they were selling it at best buy for 53 dollars. so and then this is when they had the uh uh this was a signal cable this is the signal cable stuff um i like the speaker wire there it is yeah that's when we got the big buyout from uh some guy had he had won a uh auction 
and it cost him three grand, but it was, dude, it was like $30,000 worth of shit. And then he had me help him sell it. And then he was, he was, didn't have time for it. So he ended up selling me everything, which was like pallets and pallets of fucking woofers. And I just moved them out for him and basically I had to test them all. And then we, we'd split them. And, uh, you know, I was very, uh, uh, honest, I guess you could say. Um, I, 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 I didn't want to blow that relationship. So I, I gave him every penny that I owed him. And, uh, Dude, he ended up getting me like a no fee refinance uh, second loan on my house. It was fucking great. He's like, he goes, fees are for chumps. That's what he was telling me. He worked at Wells Fargo. And at the time, they could just approve a loan if they just knew you. They're like, oh, he's a friend of mine. And that would and that's all it took to approve $11,000. <laughs> so if you know, make friends with bankers, dude. I mean, most of the time they're douchebags. So, But if you can make friends with them or give them something they like, and uh, treat them to something, you know, they, they can use, do it. So, but if it's, if it's too much, you know, try to have something in common. Typically they have BMWs in common and shit like that. So, but these, all this wire is expensive. And this was all from uh, Recoil uh, or Edge, I should say. Edge is the parent company for Recoil. And this is the company that um, Larry owns 50% of. So, uh, not that that means anything in China because he's the he's the bitch end of the 50%. It's like trying to own beachfront property in Mexico. You don't really own it. Some Mexican owns it 51%. You own 49%, so you're the bitch. So uh, this is their super flex wire, translucent red, translucent black, 8 gauge, 0 gauge, 1 aught and 2 aught. And these were 50 foot sections. See? Not that bad. So when you guys are paying $9 a foot, I'm just like laughing at you. Like, oh, you guys are retards. That's why I tell you just, you know, fucking buy welding cable. Because welding cable, by law, has to be copper. If you use distribution blocks. Uh, Fosgate has always had a, a weird thing. Like, uh, um, it depended on, I guess, how much money they had extra to invest in fuse blocks. Because sometimes they would make the amplifiers on purpose without fuses in them. So that you'd have to buy a fuse block. And for a while there, I think it was uh, it was when Scott Dealey uh, joined them in uh, 2000 um, that they were doing like a, they'd give you like a three year warranty on your amplifier if you bought the power kit full price. So not, not, that's that's still not a great deal, but it's better than the other deals that were available. So. But it was just to move more wire. So, because there was a lot of, or at least back then, there was a lot of margin in accessories and wire. And that's, you know, I, I think I talked about this before about, um, yeah, there you go. Solid brass ring terminals, one pair, $9. That's ex that's that's expensive. Um, because their cost on that was like, dude, it's like, it's like 50 cents. It's like a 25 cents. It's so cheap. So... Uh, yeah, when you start seeing manufacturing costs, you're like, oh, yeah, oh, there we go, capacitors. Uh, the CPCC2, 100 farad, dealer cost. Yeah, so that was my cost, and then I wrote down what I probably suggested that I should sell them for. So I think I tried to sell some stuff like that. And then, of course, the power capacitors were all being... Uh, sourced by Edge. And then um, they ended up, um, and, you know, more power to them. Rockford was like, okay, we don't need to use Edge anymore after I think their uh, contract was up or whatever. And then they, they you, you send enough people to go live over there and you find better deals. So, and that's why it's good to pay some guy, you know, a hundred grand a year to go live over there and, and fuck all the Asian whores he wants. Um, to save you a million dollars a year. That's a money shot right there. So, but there's your extra little treat. It's been 44 minutes. I love you guys. Sleep tight with those car audio boners you got. I will talk to you tomorrow.